Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and today I have got a Firewall 2 video. These kind of videos I'm always excited to make and I hope I get to make a lot more of these coming up in the near, not too distant future, I hope. I should mention Firewall 2, something that doesn't actually exist yet. I'm kind of just basing all this on what I'm expecting. We know First Contact Entertainment are hiring for something new. I just think Sony are going to be really stupid if another firewall isn't on the way for the next generation headsets. So this is what this whole video is kind of based on, kind of a, a wish, but one that I think is going to happen. So with that in mind, this video is called 8 Things That Firewall 2 Needs To Do Better Than Firewall 1. Basically going to be a wish list. And of course it's going to be my own subjective opinion so feel free to add yours at the end in the comments before we begin let me just give a quick disclaimer that i am a community moderator for first contact entertainment so if you want to take everything i'm saying with a pinch of salt then feel free to do that now let me jump in with number one dedicated servers this one is kind of obvious and one i think that we can all agree on having dedicated servers in an online multiplayer game brings with it a host of benefits and maybe just one negative. Firstly, the game doesn't need to pick one of the players to be a host, meaning someone on the McDonald's Wi-Fi connection creating lag in the session isn't going to be an issue that ruins things for everyone. So less lag, but more importantly, in the context of firewall, no more disconnects because a host decides to leave, booting everybody out to the main menu. That was something that could get really frustrating if you spent a while matchmaking, only for the host to decide it's time to go, a Fortnite dance video for his TikTok account, meaning you have to start the matchmaking process again. The downside to dedicated servers is that they are much more expensive to run than peer-to-peer, -peer. so if Firewall 2 was to see a big drop-off in players, Sony might decide it might not be very viable to continue supporting us, and as a result the game dies a tragic death. But Given that you can still find matches in Firewall Zero Hour right now, that wouldn't be a huge concern for me, at least not until before Firewall 3 comes out. Fingers crossed. So speaking of that matchmaking, number two, matchmaking screens. One of the biggest complaints you'll see about Firewall Zero Hour is how much time you spend looking at the matchmaking screen, waiting for players to join. Being a virtual reality game, Firewall 2 will likely be somewhat niche. Even if it does become twice as successful as Firewall 1, it will still have a smaller pool of players than something like Call of Duty or Battlefield, especially as the years roll on. As such, you might find yourself in this matchmaking screen more and more. One often requested feature is to make the matchmaking screen more interactive, perhaps allow players to move around, test out their weapons at a shooting range, or manually select their loadouts by equipping them physically instead of going through menus. Originally, Firewall Zero Hour was going to allow both teams to communicate with each other over voice chat, but First Contact Entertainment removed this ability as they felt it would be better to let teams come up with a strategy during this time instead which is fair enough but maybe it would still be cool to interact with the enemy team while matchmaking too even if the voice chat remains limited to teams only and on the topic of voice chat let me just quickly throw into this category that i'd love for voice chat to continue during loading screens anyway those are just some random suggestions that i'm throwing out there as ideas of what we could do to fill the time when in the matchmaking screen so feel free to add yours in the comments below but the main point here is to just make it more dynamic and interesting number three more modes this is self-explanatory really don't get me wrong i love the contracts mode that we have and a lot of you do too if you're still playing it three years later it's firewall's signature mode and i want to see it return however i'm not going to say no to additional modes to shake things up and give us a change of pace now and again now a big reason firewall zero hour never got additional modes is because of fears of fracturing the player base and with so many people complaining about long lobby waiting times if the player base was fractured they would have been even worse so it is is understandable from First Contact Entertainment's point of view, but also frustrating from the player's point of view. Now there could be certain workarounds to this, however, which I hope we see in Firewall 2. Things like having a playlist that rotates between different modes, or perhaps time-limited modes that appear on weekends or during special times of the year. Something along those lines. Let me know your thoughts on that below in regards to splitting up the player base, and also let me know what kind of modes you'd like to see added. Number 4. Gun Balance. Okay, so this one is a difficult one to talk about for me because I'm just an uneducated ape, you know? I don't really understand the technical aspects of design and how these weapons work, 
why they work the way that they do but in my years of playing firewall i've always felt a little bit sad that the game had all these really really cool guns beautifully designed and continued to add cool guns throughout the years but i felt like i needed to stick to like two or three guns because those guns were the meta and if you weren't using them you were going to be at a disadvantage. The Taylor CQB, the EHG shotgun, the Reg Case Classic, those were my go-tos. Crossbow was kind of an exception because of how unique and cool that was to use, but eventually I dropped that too because enemies would counter it pretty effectively with bullet sponge and make you vulnerable. Now I know you can get kills with just about every single gun in this game if you really wanted to, it's not like they're useless, but when you're up against a squad of Reg K8 Classics, which you often will be, it's like playing with a handicap. So what's the solution to this? Well, that's a tough one. I mean, you want all the guns to feel unique and have a purpose for existing, but if you have 10 assault rifles and two of them are top tier, do you need those other A's? But then if you nerf those top two to bring them in line with the rest, then they lose their uniqueness maybe. And then maybe they all feel the same and kind of boring. Maybe the way to go is to continually adjust weapon balance so that no one gun remains the king for long, but even that has its downsides. Give me your ideas on how you would address this in the comments, or maybe you think I'm wrong and things are fine as they are, or maybe it's just a problem that can't ever really be solved, I don't know. Either way, let me know. Number five, more weapon classes. While we are on the topic of weapons, how about a wider variety of types of weapons thanks to the increased flexibility afforded by the power of the PS5? Surely the most obvious choice would be sniper rifles here as getting functioning scopes to work in PSVR 1 games is very rare because it requires a section of the screen to be rendered twice. Hats off to Merden Paul for getting that to work in Alvo by the way. So snipers with functioning scopes, but what else to go along with the already already established assault rifles, SMGs, shotguns and handguns, perhaps some heavy weapons, LMGs, grenade launchers, flamethrowers, RPGs, etc, you know? Provided they can get the balance rise and fits with the game they want to make, there's loads of room for new and interesting weapons and also, not just weapons, gear. All kinds of crazy inventive gear, equipment and whatnot. I really want to see First Contact Entertainment go crazy, not limited by the hardware at least not as much. Number six, improved skills. One of the questions I got asked a lot from people new to Firewall was which is the best contractor. I've made videos and tier lists noting which ones are the best and why. And while there is a nice selection of contractors that I would recommend, some of these guys are kind of useless when it comes to their skills, which is a shame because a lot of them have really good designs that you never really get to see. Okoro, Raha, Diaz and a couple of others are so good that you'll rarely want to use others outside of certain circumstances circumstances like co-op or maybe certain maps but how many of you are using ruby or tariq i'd love for firewall 2 to add some more tempting skills to really get us thinking when we're selecting our contractors number seven the controller okay so i think most of us agree that the aim controller is the best possible way to experience firewall zero hour it adds so much to the experience and really helps you feel like you're holding a weapon while in the headset but the aim controller that we have right now is unlikely to be supported by the new headset, so we'll need another solution. There are two possible options I'd love to see happen before Firewall 2 launches. The first is obviously a new aim controller, basically the same as the first one but with all the enhancements of a DualSense controller including adaptive triggers, haptic feedback, all that good stuff, as well as the inside out tracking that the new orb controllers are going to have to finally rid us of the drift and that silly glowing ball. The second option would be to use the two new orb controllers that will be presumably bundled in with every PSVR 2 headset based on leaks at least, but allow us a simple plastic frame or something along those lines to place these orbs into so that it basically becomes a new aim controller at a fraction of the price. Think the sharpshooter on PS3 for the move controllers if you want an example of the kind of thing I'm thinking of. Number eight, next gen goodness. This one isn't one particular thing, but rather many. Going from PSVR 1 to PSVR 2, I'm expecting a significant jump in every aspect of the firewall experience. I'm talking better visuals that take advantage of the eye tracking foveas and rendering to really maximize visual fidelity. I want to see a huge improvement to lighting so that it can be more dynamic, allowing it to be a gameplay element by bringing in maybe flashlights, night vision, maybe really dark maps, maybe let's go Metal Gear Solid 2 and let us shoot out the lights to add another layer of tactical depth. I want to see huge improvements to effects, both visual and audio. 
bullet damage, dust, smoke, muzzle flash, explosions, etc, etc. Maybe even ray tracing if that's not too demanding. There's a million things I could add to this section, but basically, you know, boil it down. Let me feel the next generation leap in Firewall 2. And there it is. Eight things Firewall 2 needs to improve over Firewall 1. You may have noticed I never said I wanted them to include rounds. That was very deliberate. Fight me. Let me know what you think about my list and what you yourself would change, remove or add to improve Firewall in the future. And with that, I will end this video. But before I do, let me thank my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as we speak. The top tier Patreon supporters, Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Crumb, Pete Hawkins and Tradition. Thank you very much for that support. It is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to support me on the Patreon, the link to that will be in the description. If not, a like, comment, share, all that usual YouTube and shite will help greatly also. Finally, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. You can check him out in the description below. Also, Decepticon.com. With that, I'll end this video. Please stay nice and moist. Petrifying pumpkin.